My name is Adam Asenberg and I am running for Sheriff of Whitman County and I am making this video in respect to all the different laws that are trying to be passed right now merging medical marijuana with recreational marijuana. This video can go ahead and be copied and sent to anyone you wish to send it to. This is my public stance as someone running for office as well as a patient on medical marijuana. We are going to go ahead and make historic landmarks here in Washington State as well as in Colorado about the medical marijuana being merged with recreational. But you have to be careful how you do it because in Washington State many mistakes have been made so far to where a hideous cartel is being created right now through the Washington State Liquor Control Board. We have had medical marijuana for 15 years and all that time the state of Washington has never seen to it that the sick and disabled or the poor have a safe adequate supply of this medicine of marijuana also known as cannabis. Now they want to go ahead and stop patients from being able to grow for themselves or to care for those that cannot grow for themselves. They want to go ahead control everything through the Liquor Control Board and put a sin tax on medical marijuana and why is it that anything medical would have a sin tax attached to it anyway and as far as a sin tax being placed on medicine, cigarettes, or alcohol goes, where is the separation of church and state? But let's go ahead and get into the needs of the patients and the guidelines of what you're trying to create under the law right now. First of all, you're going to go ahead and take 15 plants and knock it down to 6 plants. Now, there are several different stages of the growing process, which I will get into later. There is the cloning process, so you don't lose your strain of medicine. Then there's a the vegetation cycle. And then you have two months of putting it into a specific light cycle, so you can actually produce the buds on the plant to get the medicine you need to harvest. But all of that will be shown to you more in detail later. Let's get into the safety issues and the laws right now first. The first safety issues I hear about all the time is about all the violence and the robberies taking place with marijuana growers. Like I say, we've had this for 15 years, but this has only been a problem with burglaries for about the last five years. Take a look no further than the Justice Department as the cause of this problem and the state allowing it to take place of having our gun rights taken away to where our Second Amendment right to protect ourselves is no longer in play. We are a felon anymore if we possess a firearm. So, of course, criminals know that now that it is open season on patients. Go ahead and give us back our right to possess firearms and see how fast that problem is dealt with. Another issue is that in none of these bills is the fact that these pesticides and chemicals that are going to be allowed in the recreational marijuana, patients that have compromised immune systems cannot go ahead and handle the pesticides and the chemicals that are going to be in the recreational cannabis. They need it to be as pure as possible because this is being used as medicine. If you really want to go ahead and deal with a safety issue for patients, put it into play in your bills to where this medicine is tested before it is given to patients. Another thing to be dealt with is under these guidelines, many cancer patients are no longer going to be having access to the low THC medicines that they need because they are considered hemp under the new 502 guidelines. Go ahead and bring in extra revenue to the state by having the patients that are able to grow for others to continue to grow for others and have that medicine tested at state testing facilities. You can make your money from that and then of course the growers at that point in time can be taken off of public assistance to where they can be tax paying citizens once again and you're saving money that way for the state. And then, of course, you got the revenue from them selling it to the stores for the patients. So all around, three different ways, you're making money off a of patient grows if you go ahead and allow the patients to grow for patients. The issue I hear a great deal about is the police are saying that they cannot recognize who's a patient and who is not a patient. 
For all the years that we've had medical marijuana, patients have had to get a signed recommendation from their doctor. This paper right here is signed by my doctor. And we already have laws in place. We have RCW 6950-403-C that says that it's a Class C felony to get a controlled substance under false pretenses. So to go ahead and work out a compromise with law enforcement, all they have to do is get a copy of this paper right here. They can always go ahead and call the doctor's office the next operating day to verify that paperwork is legitimate. If not, the police have already gotten their evidence they need to arrest that person for lying to law enforcement about being a medical marijuana patient and they would have all the evidence they need to continue on with their felony in a court case. So clearly we already have something in place with this piece of paper right here with creating a state ID on medical marijuana patients proving their patients. I'm going to go ahead and go down and take a look at the plants so I can go ahead and show you state representatives just how long it takes to go ahead and acquire more medicine once you harvest a plant. This right here is a hydroponic cloning machine and by hydroponic what I mean is a water pump sprays water underneath the root system right there to do actually develop the root system. I'm going to go ahead and look underneath the system right here and see what is underneath that plastic piece. See right there, there's a system that sprays the water up underneath the cups and sprays onto the stems to develop the roots and there's the root system right there on some of the plants. Every plant is going to survive the cutting into the root stage. As you can see right there are some dead plants that did not make it and I lost that strain right there. Now it takes two to three weeks for those roots to develop and once they do they get moved to the next stage. Stage can be seen right here underneath my light. I've got four plants there and those will sit for about another two to three weeks before they get moved down to the ground. These plants right here will sit on the ground for about another two to three weeks. So right there you're looking at about two months of growth before I can move them to the next stage stage is in my vegetation room and here they will sit for another two to three months to develop a little bit of growth so I get some medicine when they go into the final stage of the bud room. Here is the final stage of the bud room and sometimes the plants in the bud stage do not survive as you can see there's a plant right there that I have lost six months of growth on and I'm not going to end up getting any medicine out of this plant right here that grew for about five months and as you can see by the size of the bud right here this plant right here is going to produce about maybe two or three days worth of medicine for me what am I going to do for another five months and some odd days until another plant gives me the medicine I need as you've just seen from my garden, under the new six rule plan of have only having three in the bud and three in the vegetation stage, for every 60 day period I would be out of medicine for 54 days. What is the cartel of the liquor control board going to do about me being out of medicine and not having any money to pay for any? If you were to investigate me, you would see that I set up a sting operation against the Justice Department with the hopes that the DEA would bust me so I could bring in the Cancer Institute and the Federal Veterans Administration and show how the DEA and the FDA have superseded their authority on marijuana guidelines for many, many years, but they were too much of a coward to bust me, so they went ahead and had the Quad City Drug Task Force bust me instead and I ended up winning that case because of them dismissing it. I went back and got my cannabis and everything else returned back to me a week later. And now I've got a six million dollar civil suit getting ready to be filed thanks to Doug Phelps, uh, Phelps and Associates out in Spokane, Washington. 
I am going to fight you tooth and nail on this. We have federal laws that say that medicine cannot be tied in with the Liquor Control Board. Well, I'm going to invoke that in federal court. Also, too, I'm going to use the RICO Act, the CSA against the state. Everything you have used against patients and providers for so long, I am going to use against you. The Mexican cartel kills their competition right away. The Washington State cartel throws them in jail with the use of the police, allowing for patients and providers to get beaten and raped in jail. Where is the compassion of our leaders? There is none. All they can smell is money. We got to end this now. We got to stand for the people once more. The leaders of Washington State want to do what's right by the patients. Go ahead in your bills and see to it we do not lose our homes, our children, our jobs, and see to it we have a safe, adequate supply of medicine. That is nothing that is in these bills that you present right now. The only thing that's in these bills is to go ahead and see to it that the Liquor Control Board takes control of not only recreational but medical marijuana at, as well. This is nothing more than a monopoly. It is nothing more than a cartel. If the leaders go ahead and walk all over the rights of patients, I plead with all of you out there to spread your seeds everywhere and show these leaders just how we will fight back. I also ask you people out there to go ahead and fight the law with the law and nail the state with everything you can. Thank you. If you wish to contact me, please call Adam at area code 509-288-4799. Or check out Adam, the number four, sheriff.org. Once again, Adam, the number four, sheriff.org.